Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. We're in the middle of the series with Gematrias. And today the uh, letter, the number, is Gimel. Again, Gimel having a numerical value of three. And it is the third letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Now, three creates a solid, firm basis. It establishes the necessary foundation, which lies at the center of Jewish living. Every process can be divided into three stages. There is the beginning point, which clearly defines the direction in which one is heading. Next, there is the middle, when, one man, when man sets into motion all the tools at his disposal to actively pursue his goals. And lastly, there is the final phase, when man reaches his destination. Tradition divides the history of worldly existence, which can exist for no longer than 6,000 years, into three periods, consisting of 2,000 years each. First period is connected to emptiness and void, tov of o, a time without Torah. The second period is basically a time of Torah. And the third period is the coming of the Mashiach. Again, we are in the third period, and that's why we talk about the ikveh of Mashiach, the footsteps of Mashiach. This world is subject to characteristics of space and time that can by themselves be broken down into three components. In terms of space, the human eye views the world through three spatial dimensions of length, width, and height. Time can similarly be divided into three tenses, past, present, and future. The nature of three is capable of successfully harmonizing contradictory parts. The interrelationship of two opposites can combine to create a third new reality. For example, a stool with two legs at opposite sides cannot stand. But by placing a third leg equidistant to the two extremities, forming a triangle, you now have stability. Marriage, the bringing together of two opposites of man and woman with two different personalities, we would call it A and B, to form a stra stronger, better third possibility, which is a C. Due to its standing as the exemplary symbol of peace, balance, and equili equilibrium, three contains many of the qualities to be classified as basically the ideal number. This synthesis is exemplified in mankind. He fulfills the purpose of creation when he successfully integrates his physical and spiritual components into a new, higher reality. Even our names can be connected to the number three. There is a name that your parents give you at birth, the name that your friends call you, and the name that you earn by virtue of how you live your life. The fusion of one and two through the number three finds important expression in the model of, of a family. The opposite natures of man and woman joined together as one flesh, combining the conception of new life in the birth of a child. They retain their individual personalities, while at the same time creating a new integrated third reality that is conceived through their combined contribution. The Founding Fathers represent the essential fundamental principles that Judaism is based on. They are the three central pillars upon which the world stands. They are Gemilat Chasadim, which is acts of kindness, which is alluded to by Avram Avinu, Abraham our father. There is divine service, prayer, tefillah, alluded to by Yitzchak, and Torah, alluded to by Yaakov Avinu. Each one of the Avot, the fathers, emphasized an es as essential quality of the divine chesed, loving kindness, gevura, justice, and tiferet, beauty and truth. Pirkei Avos added an alternative set of three principles upon which the world exists. They are din, justice, emet, truth, and shalom, peace. The Torah was given on Mount Chorev, another name for Mount Sinai. Now the word Chorev is made up of three letters, a chet, a resh, and a vet. And an acronym for these words are chesed, kindness for the chet, rachamim, mercy for, for the uh, um, resh, and busha, 
for the bet of modesty. These three traits have defined a Jewish personality. In fact, the, the Gemara states, the Talmud, that any Jew who does not possess these three traits must be descended from what we call the Erev Rav, those Egyptians that joined the nation of Israel when they left Egypt. Questionable as far as their conversion and how they accepted godliness as to whether they did it as just being on the winning side or whether they actually tried to come closer to God. The theological foundation of Judaism can be organized into three central tenets. The first is the existence of God as the singular eternal creator. The second, the divinity of Torah from heaven as the immutable laws transmitted to the Jewish people through Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, the greatest of the prophets. The third is the concept of divine reward and punishment where every individual is accountable for his conduct and his far-reaching consequences. The festivals, the Chagim, parallel the order of the agricultural year. The three festivals begin with Pesach in the spring, with the beginning of the growing season. Shavuot is the festival of harvesting the crops, and Sukkot is the festival of the ingathering into the storehouses. These three festivals correspond to, again, the three Avot. Abraham, Avram Avinu relates to Pesach, Yitzchak to Shavuot, and Yaakov to Sukkot. The festival of Pesach can relate to the first tenant, the existence of God, since God proclaimed his name and the divine providence through the miracles of the exodus from Egypt. The festival of Shavuot, when the Torah was given on Mount Sinai, parallels Torah given from heaven. And the festival of Sukkot, when the farmer gathers into his silo all of his produce. And the time when the farmer sees his reward at the end of the agricultural year relates, again, to reward and punishment. The Gemara, the Talmud, records that God gave the threefold Torah, what we call Tanakh. Torah, Nevi'im, and Kesuvim, five books of the Torah, eight books of the prophets, and eleven books of the writings to a threefold people, Kohanim, Levium, and Yisraelim, to the third-born child, to Yochevet and Amram, or Miriam, Aaron, and Moshe, the third, on the third day of the men separating from their wives, in the third Jewish month, the month of Sivan, Kriya Torah, the public reading, the Torah reading, was arranged to ensure that three days do not elapse without the congregation hearing the holy words of Torah. Also, a minimum of three people must be called up to the Torah reading, and each passage must contain at least three verses. Mitzvah observance is composed of three essential human endeavors. They are thought, speech, and action. Man must sanctify all three endeavors. Several mitzvot Group, group, uh, groupings are arranged in sets of threes. There are three cardinal sins that may not be violated even under the pain of death. They are idol worship, sexual impropriety, adultery, and then murder. There are three commandments traditionally reserved for the Jewish woman. They are challah, separating the portion of the dough for the priest, nida, the laws of family purity, and there the kindling of the Shabbat, they wrote some Shabbat lights. The Gemara mentions three specific mitzvot that offer the Jew a measure of protection. They are the mezuzah scroll on his doorpost, the tzitzit on his garment, and the tefillin on his body. Many halachic rulings convey the principle that matters of importance are only connected to units of three or more, but lesser numbers are considered insignificant. For example, a distance of up to three hand breaths, basically about 12 inches, between two surfaces does not constitute a gap or break. It's as if it's connected. It's called lovud. The volume of three lug of drawn water invalidates a mikvah under certain conditions. When a farmer harvests his field, if one or two stalks of grain or grapes that fall during the harvesting fall onto the ground, they belong to the poor and not to the farmer. If a third one falls, then it remains the property of the farmer. 
A legal ruling is determined by what we call a Beisdin, Jewish court, composed of a minimum of three male judges. The requisite number of men eating together that join in for what we call a zimun, which is an invitation to grace after meals, is a minimum of three. The grouping of three defines something new and distinct. Once an animal gores three times, before that it's called a short tom, a timid ox, after three goring it assumes a new identity as a shore muad, forewarned ox, with the owner now liable for full financial restitution for any damages. In halacha, nighttime is determined, for example, by the Shabbat, when three stars are visible to the naked eye. And all public declarations would be proclaimed three times. Perhaps the most famous example of the power of three is a principle that we call a chazaka, which is a confirmation or presumption. Anything done three times creates a defined pattern, a permanence. In fact, it's considered a vow. A person does it three times. Many historical events are connected to the number three. The journey of Avram Avinu, Abraham, on his way to the Akedat Yitzchak, the binding of Yitzchak, took three days. Paro refused the Israelites' request to leave Egypt and travel into the desert for three days to serve God. There are three preparatory days prior to the receiving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. Yoshua had the people ready themselves for three days before crossing the Jordan, the Ardain, when they went into the Holy Land to conquer it. In preparation for risking her life for the Jewish people, Esther Hamalka, Queen Esther, fasted for three days and three nights. There were three angels that visited Abram Avinu on the third day of his circumcision. Shimon and Levi killed the men of Shechem on the third day after their circumcision. And Lovin was informed on the third day after Yaakov had fled with all of his family and possessions. And also, last, on the third day of Esther's fast, she went to the king to plead for the salvation of the Jewish nation. So, in the words of the wisest of all men, Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, who wrote in Kohelet, a three-ply cord is not easily broken. This alludes to the forefathers. The existence of three consecutive generations of Torah scholars provides an assurance that the Torah will never depart from this lineage. The number three, the Hebrew word shalosh, relates to the word shalshelet, a chain. And this is because each generation adds a new link to the chain of Jewish history. And so our past, present, and future is very much connected to the gematria of the letter Gimel, the number three. God bless and thank you very much. Have Shabbat Shalom and enjoy.